Welcome back, my dear friends. Are you ready to begin the final video of this year's Valentine's Day special? Good. Then let us finish this. Our first three installments of this mini-series dealt with three kinds of love besides the romantic. Familial love, friendship, and a pet's devotion. Now, in this final video, we explore one more very important, yet often overlooked form of love. Self-love. No, I don't mean like that, you silly dumplings. YouTube guidelines, remember? What I am referring to is that in order to truly love another, one must love oneself. I do not mean in a vain way, for, like any form of love, the extreme can extend into obsessive and healthy category. So you can go ahead and get down from that tavern table and put away your Gaston costume. This video is dedicated for all you listeners who have either lost or never had a partner for Valentine's Day. Tonight, I, Phantasmal Poppy, bring you a tale of love, loss, and healing. I give you lovey dovey. This story takes place roughly a year or so after the events of the Butter Churn. For those of you who have not heard that video, then you may want to check it out first. During her adolescence, my granny had her heart set on a particular young man from her community that we'll call Ben. The two of them really bonded as friends and then developed a mutual crush on one another, which were then nurtured to the point they wanted to take it to the next step, courting. These were the mountains, folks. Courting was very much a thing that existed well into the 20th century, complete with chaperones and all. Mind you, it was a bit less stringent than, say, courting of the Victorian era, but it was still a very public, well-announced event that was expected to lead to an engagement and, later, a marriage. However, her father was very much against the match, and, well, of his daughter's dating in general. Supposedly, one of his daughters had been a bit reckless in the company of boys, so he decided to rein in on them all. In fact, he probably would very much have kept any of them from courting until they were thirty, if he had his way about it. Without her father's blessing, Granny was forced to break things off with Ben. At least, officially. The truth is, even though she was trapped under the brow-beating gaze of her father whenever they were at town, Granny and Ben were still able to cast surreptitious glances at one another and pass messages along between their mutual friends that still wanted to see that ship sail. As time went on, however, it was harder and harder to keep up a clandestine relationship with little more than hope to go on, so their correspondence became less and less, until that autumn when Ben went to visit some of his relatives up north. Then it ceased entirely. A few lonely months went by, with Granny still hoping that she and Ben could be together once she was old enough to leave home. One night, she found herself unable to sleep, so she stepped outside to get some fresh air. The night was eerily calm, with a light snow having settled over the land earlier during the day. Sound normally carried far in those hills, but during the winter, every little sound was magnified, which is why she heard the coo of a turtle dove long before it came into view. She looked up to see it as it drifted over the porch awning, swooping up to land in a single tree they had close to the house. It was very unusual to see a songbird so active during the day flying about at night, especially during the winter. What was even stranger was that this turtle dove was not the normal gray. Neither did it have the usual black and yellow flecked wings or a peach-tinned breast. Instead, it was solid white. Had Granny not known better, 
she would have sworn a bit of snow had taken on life of its own and flown up into the tree. Despite albino wild animals being such an unusual sight, its appearance might have been explained away naturally, of course. Perhaps the dove, too, could not sleep and was out for a midnight flight? Still, Granny was Appalachian and had heard many omens and superstitions from her relatives that had been passed down through generations. Some creatures the mountain folk paid more attention to than others. Owls being a sign of death. Frogs croaking at night, meaning rain in three days, and... Doves. Doves meant so many things. One attempting to fly into the window might mean death is approaching, while a solid white dove feather is believed to be the sign of an angel nearby. Was it possible this bird was not really a bird, but a divine messenger in disguise? As Granny stepped off the porch to get closer to it, the bird stopped preening itself and looked at her. Instantly, Granny felt a wave of despair wash over her. She grasped at her chest, feeling as though her heart had truly been shattered on the spot. Granny fell to her knees and threw her arms around herself, sobbing uncontrollably, her tears making soft indentations in the snow. If she had been the wailing sort of crier that her older sister was, surely someone would have come out to see what the commotion was about. Instead, she stayed hunched over in the snow, crying until her tears ran dry. The strangest part about it was, Granny could not figure out the slightest reason why simply locking eyes with a dove would have had such a devastating effect on her. Sure, she liked doves and wasn't very keen on eating them even when that was all they had for supper, but there was no particular attachment to them that would have called for that reaction. After a while, she blinked up through bleary tears, seeing the bird's white plumage still illuminated by the nearly full moon high above them both. It continued to stare at her for a few more eerie moments before taking off and flying back over the house. Granny then realized that she had been kneeling in the snow and got up. She must have been outside for quite a while as, though it was only slightly chilly, her extremities had gone numb from the cold. Shivering, she made her way back inside, climbed into her bed, and went to sleep. The dove was forgotten after that and she would not remember the strange event for three more days. After the snow and ice had melted off, Granny's father had taken the few children into town. Mostly, this had been a way to get the ones with extreme cabin fever out from underfoot, while their mother and the more well-behaved children helped around the farm. Granny had just finished helping her mother put the finishing touches on supper, when she heard the sounds of her returning siblings outside. Instantly, the door flew open with enough force to rattle the whole house, prompting loud lectures from her mother in the kitchen and her father outside. Shortly after, in came running Granny's oldest sister, who had a wild look on her face, one that Granny knew was never a good sign. As her mother finished lecturing her, the sister opened her mouth to speak, shooting Granny a rather snobbish look. Yes, Granny realized, that was definitely not a good sign. I did not mean to slam the door open, Mom, the sister said. I just really wanted to share the news with her before she found out from someone else. Since this sister is going to be showing up a lot due to her knack of getting herself and Granny into trouble, I'm going to go ahead and give her a proper alias now. Spitunia should work. It sounds a lot like Spitoon. Spitunia. Kinda how she never could keep her mouth shut when tact was needed. She did just spit out the most hurtful stuff. I think the only reason she didn't get clobbered more times than she did was because her family said she had brain damage, which may be true. However, the fact that she really liked to pick at people's vulnerable spots instead of just saying, that's an ugly shirt, makes me question how much was brain and how much was mean spirit. S so, so, Petunia, I mean Petunia, it is. Anyway. The ominous announcement of bad news brought one of Granny's other sisters and some of her brothers running, and they tried to drag Petunia out of the kitchen, shooting her dirty looks and trying to make excuses for needing to borrow the big mouth for something. 
Unfortunately, their mother told them to quit roughhousing around and let Petunia say her piece. In a sickly sweet tone, another usual sign of Petunia's being up to no good, she looked at my granny and said, I am so sorry, but we just came back from town and I saw Ben. Apparently, while he was up north, he met another girl and now they're married. Immediately, Granny knew why Petunia had been so eager to give her the news. You see, both girls had been sweet on Ben, but Ben had been far more fond of my shy, introverted grandmother than her more outgoing, troublemaking sister. This rebuffing of her affections made Petunia extremely jealous, so she had been elated when her father made the two of them break up. Ironically, a household-wide courting ban had been placed on all of the children because Petunia kept hanging around and flirting with some of the more unsavory boys in the neighborhood. This meant that not only did Petunia not get a chance with Ben, she didn't get a chance with anyone for quite a while. Because you better believe that little siblings were not at all happy over that one, or some of the other messes she dragged them into. I am convinced that if someone thought they could hide a secret at the Pentagon, somebody's little brother or sister could dig it up if it meant they could tattle to mommy about it. However, despite hearing what otherwise would have been soul-crushing news, Granny did not react. It wasn't merely out of trying to be tough and holding her feelings around her bully of a sister, either. She just genuinely found that she no longer cared. That was when she remembered the dove in the tree a few nights before, and how she had cried her heart out seemingly unprovoked. While her mother was scolding Petunia and her younger siblings were glaring daggers at her, Granny could only blink, searching inside of herself to find a shred of grief and finding none. It was as if the dove had come to warn her that her boyfriend had moved on. When she thought about it, it truly fit, as turtle doves are also known as morning doves. And was that not preemptive mourning that she did the night out in the snow? Was not the sorrow she felt then what she would have felt later upon finding that her love had not waited for her, instead finding comfort in the arms of someone who was readily available for him and had the blessing of her family? The dove had essentially helped Granny move on without her even having known why. Fortunately, this story ends with more than the bully Petunia losing face. A few years later, Granny met my papa, and they got married not long after. They've been together for over half a century now. And, for the record, Ben and his wife? They too lived a very long and happy marriage until Ben himself passed away about a decade or so ago. I mention this because both Ben and Granny were hurt when their relationship was broken off. Neither of them were bad people, but the circumstances just weren't right for either of them. In the end, Ben found a person more suitable for him, and Granny found someone more suitable for her. Things worked out the way they were meant to, with both parties having an inevitably happy ending. Except for Petunia who got in trouble because she was never supposed to have been talking to Ben to begin with to even find out he had been married. She went on to still be a butt and drag Granny into some weird situations. But that is a tale for another time. And there you have it, my friends. Phantasmal Poppy's Valentine's Day 2019 special has finally concluded. I sincerely hope you all enjoyed these stories. Which one was your favorite? Did any of you lose a beloved relative like Granny's niece? Or wish for a sign the way Terry did when her friend passed away? Did you shed a tear for Max's loyalty well into the afterlife? Or have you found comfort that you too will find love again, the same way that Granny and Ben did when they were split apart? Please comment below your thoughts on this mini-series. March will soon be here, everyone, and with that comes radical changes in both season, weather, and people. But I will still be here, 
bringing you your latest spooky fix when you most need it. If you like this video and the series, please like and subscribe, and do me a favor by hitting the notification bell so you can catch the latest story the moment it comes out. Thank you all so much, and see you again real soon.